last week we um, looked into the Word of God concerning in our times of weakness of how we can still be strong in the Lord. Amen. Does that encourage you? Well, we get physically weak at times. We can get uh, beaten down, uh, feel like we're defeated. But, you know, it's in times like that that God can still make it possible for us to grow and become strong in our faith and strong in Him. Uh, I want to say this. When we, what's God's objective when those things are allowed? See, God allows those things to happen, just like He allowed that thorn in the flesh to come upon the Apostle Paul. Why did he do that? Because, well, for one thing, sometimes the flesh gets uh, puffed up, right? Uh, And I think the main thing is here that if we start thinking we can do things on our own, we become self-independent from God, and God is trying to teach us that we must Always be dependent upon Him. Here's another thing we need to keep in mind. When or if we become self-dependent, dependent upon ourselves, we are actually opening a door for Satan into our lives. Now that can apply to a nation. And definitely it can apply to us individually. You say, I can handle it, I can do it, I don't need God's help. You're opening a door for Satan to have access into your life now. Okay. I want to continue on a thought here uh, concerning uh, our strength in God and our power and our authority that we have as a believer. All right? If you would go with me to the Gospel of St. Matthew, uh, chapter 7, and I want to read verses 28 and 29 to begin with. This is the conclusion of what we call the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, Jesus, what a discourse. What teaching he had there on the Mount. And this is what it says in verses 28 and 29. That uh, it came to pass when Jesus had ended uh, these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. Uh, Jesus taught things, yes, of what the law said, but Jesus was bringing his disciples and the people into what we have today, church, which is the new covenant, right? And A new and a living way is what Jesus was leading us, beginning here on the Sermon on the Mount. That was his doctrine. See, he he taught something that the law did not teach. He taught, you must be born again. Now, they didn't understand that. If they did, Nicodemus didn't understand it, did he? So it was a new doctrine that Jesus was teaching, uh, although he was explaining the law and what the law was leading to the grace of God in the New Testament. All right, verse 29. For he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. And that's what I want to talk to you for a little while this morning, is how Jesus spoke 
with authority. Hmm? Now, that's a, that's a, a very important word, authority. And uh, authority, actually back in these days, days of Jesus on the earth here, it was a major issue. Now, the Jewish leaders, the ones who were uh, in the synagogues and, and in the temple and things, uh, ministering and, and uh, the law and everything that they did, now let me tell you something, they understood what authority was and they desired the uppermost seat in the synagogue, right? Didn't Jesus say that? A lot of people, I want authority, I want the high seat. And uh, what had happened here as Jesus taught them, the scribes uh, and, and the Pharisees and a lot of those, they felt challenged. What made them feel challenged was that Jesus spoke with authority. Now, all the scribes and all of the religious leaders of that day, all they could do was explain what had happened under the law. Jesus was the fulfillment of the law, and that gave him better way to explain it with authority. You understand what I'm saying? He fulfilled all that. Now, Go with me to the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 11. Uh, it is quest Jesus' authority is questioned here. Now, you hear somebody talking with authority. Yeah, you might wonder who gave them that authority, right? In verse 27, it says, And they, Jesus and the disciples, came again to Jerusalem. And as he was walking in the temple, there came to him the chief priest and the scribes and the elders. Those were the people that I was just talking about. Verse 28, And they said unto Jesus, By what authority... Doest thou these things, and who gave thee this authority to do these things? Well, like I said, they were some people that was uh, getting disturbed about this new teaching because what Jesus was teaching uh, would kind of uh, upset their apple cart, so to speak, you know, what they were doing. Now, verse 29, how many knows Jesus uh, had all wisdom. And here's what he said unto them. He said, I will also ask of you one question and answer me and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. <laughs> All right. Here was his question. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? Answer me. And they started reasoning with themselves saying, Well, if we say from heaven, then he will say, Well, why don't you believe him? You know, verse 32 says, And if we say of men, they feared the people, for all men counted John that he was a prophet indeed. You know, and what was John preaching? He was preaching, there's going to be one coming after me greater. Amen? The Messiah is coming. He was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. And they knew that. So what Jesus said, well, if you believe John was a true prophet, then you're going to have to believe what he says about me. Right? So here's what they did, verse 33. They answered and said unto Jesus, well, we cannot tell. <laughs> Huh. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Neither do I tell you by what authority I do these things. 
Uh, let's go on over to the Gospel of John. And we're going to look in chapter 12. And let's look at uh, verse, uh, beginning in verse uh, 44, if you will. John 12, 44. Now, it says here, Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me, uh, seeth him that sent me. He said, I am come a light into the world, and whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not, for I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. But he that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judges him, and the word that I have spoken the same shall judge him in the last day. Now notice verse 49 and also 50 where it says, For I have not spoken of myself. Now this is very important even for us today with where I'm going with authority. I have not spoken of myself. But he said, it is the Father which sent me. He gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. Hmm. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. And whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father saith unto me, so I speak. Jesus only said what the Father wanted him to say. Hmm. Wow. Now, go with me to Luke chapter 5. And we're going to look at uh, verse 17. Um, Jesus had just healed a leper. And here's what it says, uh, another paralytic person being healed here. But verse 17, and it says, And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching, as he was teaching, there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were came out of every town in Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. Notice this. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. We need more of that today. I said, the power of the Lord can be present. I, I believe the power of the Lord follows the Word of God. Okay, somebody said, well, isn't there something else that, that uh, plays a part in this? There is. There is. All right. It's actually the anointing of God that breaks the yoke. Amen? The anointing of God. Now, how do I know that? Because uh, in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, the Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, anointed Him with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Now, if Jesus had the anointing, the same anointing we can have, huh? if Jesus had that anointing, and that's how he did the works that he did, God anointed him with the Holy Ghost and with power, and then he went about healing 
people who were oppressed of the devil. So we understand Jesus used the anointing to heal people. <clears throat> now, something we need to realize, church, the anointing is God's anointing. It's not ours. Huh? Did you know the armor we put on is not ours? You can't go down to the store and buy it and say, well, it's mine. No, no, it's God's armor. It's God's anointing. Here's what we need to do to get the anointing. We need to obtain the right to use it. Somebody said, well, don't preachers get anointed? Well, yeah, they should. Don't teachers get anointed? Yeah, they should. Doesn't song leaders get uh, anointed? Choir get anointed? Yeah, they should. Amen? But you cannot work it up yourself. <laughs> I, didn't I make that clear? It's God's anointing. And there's a reason God will allow us to have that anointing. It is our God-given authority as a believer that gives us the right to have God's anointing. Mm-hmm. If we did not have any authority, we wouldn't have any anointing. Not from God. Did you know the devil can anoint people? I've been around a few devil anointed people in my, in my day. Have you? I think a lot of these performers that perform out in the secular world, all this demonic stuff, somebody said, well, how do they do it? Well, they're anointed, but not of God. God don't anoint perversion and stuff like that, does he? No. So be careful about the anointing. But for us to reap the benefits, whether it's the anointing to preach, teach, whatever saying, or whether it's anointing uh, to minister to people, whatever the anointing is, remember it comes because God has chosen us and given us uh, authority. If we didn't have authority, the anointing wouldn't get much done. Amen? Still with me? Oh, I just feel goosebumps all over me. I can do this and that. But you know what? The devil can take your goosebumps and kick you from pillar to post. <laughs> uh-huh. That's pretty good preaching, isn't it? I think so. <laughs> yeah. Thank God for those feelings and thank God for those things. But let me tell you something. If we don't have the authority, the devil knows that. I said he knows it. Uh, Luke chapter 10, we're close by there. Um. Let's look in uh, verses 17 through uh, 20 here. Uh, it tells us where Jesus had sent out 70, and it says, They returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And here's what Jesus said unto them. He said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Then he said in verse 19, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and all of the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means will hurt you. 
verse 20 does bring it all into perspective. He said, notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Hallelujah. Keeping everything understood that, you know, salvation is more important than all of the displays of power and everything that you can imagine. It's more important to be saved by the blood of Jesus Christ than any of this other, right? But we are called to do exploits and do the works that Jesus did. We're called to do that. And that's why he sent them out. All right, now, uh, Matthew, we got a lot in the Gospels here. Uh, in Matthew 28, let's go down verse 18. This is what we call the great commission that Jesus gave here, concluding, well, the gospel of St. Matthew and the gospel of Mark. And, and Jesus said uh, unto those that was there with him, he said, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. How many of you understand that Jesus was God, but he was also man? Do you understand that? He was all God, but he, we call it the incarnation when the Word or God was made flesh and dwelt among us. We call it the incarnation, man. Now, Jesus did not have to say that based upon his God part of him or being God because he's always had all power. Do you understand that? Well, even John wrote over there, in the beginning was the Word, and the, with, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by Him. Jesus never, as God, never lacked in the areas of power. But this is so important that we understand how this all happened, because all power means all power. And this all power was merited to Jesus of Nazareth because of one thing. And that one thing was because he was obedient unto death, according to the book of Philippians chapter 2, he was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And because of that, Jesus obtained, if you will, or merited this power you know, it kind of goes back to what we talked about last Sunday, wasn't it? Jesus and his weakness hanging on the cross was just ready to open up the power that, oh my, that Satan could not stand. Nobody could stand against it. Praise God. So, after the resurrection here, Jesus, as the Son of God, also as the Son of Man, could say with all authority, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Jesus, how, how does all of this power, and what does Jesus do? Well, one thing he does, he is the head of the church. He's watching over the New Testament church right now. He's watching over Lomer Church right now. Amen? He's the head over it. We are His body. We are members in particular, right? Here's another thing that we need to keep in mind too because He said all power. We're talking about supreme, sovereign authority. Now that's a lot. But it means a lot and it is a lot. That means that all of the forces of heaven are at his command. Wow. How does that make you feel? That almost gives you goosebumps to think about that, doesn't it? Amen. Now, all of the forces of heaven are at his command. Now, uh, 
over here in the, in the book of uh, uh, Psalms chapter 33 and verse 9, here's how Jesus uses his authority. It says, for he spake, that's the Lord, and it was done, he commanded, and it stood fast. Talked about that in Sunday school a little bit, didn't we? About we need to be steadfast, not movable, not, not changeable. When God says something, so be it. You can say amen right behind it, so be it. Hallelujah. So his command. Now, God releases his power through his word. Huh? Hebrews 11 and 3 says, For by faith we understand the world's creation were framed by the word of God, that those things which we see were not made of things which do appear. God spoke creation into existence. Somebody said, was it made out of nothing? Well, as far as we consider material things, yeah, it was made out of nothing. But it came out of God. That word came out of God. He is the word. He magnifies His Word even above His name. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Now, so we understand that by faith, that the worlds were framed. Now, uh, let's go Mark chapter 16. Uh, and we'll see what how this brings us into the picture. Amen. Are you glad you're in the picture too? <laughs> Amen. Uh, now here's what Mark chapter 16, uh, beginning in verse 15. Now this, what we just read was Matthew's account of the Great Commission. Here's what Mark has to say. He said, Jesus speaking, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs, listen to this, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Oh my. This talks to me because God revealed this to me one time when I desperately needed it. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Praise God. All right, go, go with me, Matthew, again. I told you we we're going to hang around the Gospels this morning. So go with me, Matthew chapter 16, if you will. And verse 13, you know the story of Peter's great confession? We can build something on Peter's confession. How many knows that? It tells us here when Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do men say that I, uh, the Son of Man, am? <laughs> of course, they answered. And then uh, here's what Peter said in verse 16. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now listen to this. Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Are you ready to understand what authority is? Listen. And I will give, if we're built upon the right foundation, listen. Jesus said, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. 
Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. You believe that's still for the church today? He didn't put a time frame on that. He didn't say, now, when you apostles die, forget all that. It's still in the Word. Amen. Let me tell you something about that. Using the name of Jesus comes under the authority of the believer. Some people use it as a slang term, profane it and everything else. God have mercy on them. We better use it as our God-given authority church. Said, what is it again? If you bind it on earth, it'll be bound in heaven. Loose, it'll be loosed in heaven. You know the book of Isaiah 22, verse 22 tells us this. If God shuts a door, no man's going to open it. But if God opens a door, no man's going to shut it. Now, don't go around trying to bind stuff here on earth that's not bound in heaven. I'll just tell you that. And that's just being smart. Amen. Don't try to loose stuff here on the earth that's not loosed in heaven. Amen. Is that a good explanation, Brother Jim? Okay, now, got that straight so we can move on, right? In other words, don't go around trying to bind your neighbor down the road that you have probably not a whole lot of knowledge what kind of a person he or she is. Amen. God gave us power over the powers of the spiritual world. That's what he's talking about. And he didn't want you going around binding everybody just because you don't like them. <laughs> Uh, laugh with me, okay? Now, Mark <laughs> chapter 5. I want to show you right quick. We've got a little time here. I just want to show you three instances. There are several different instances in the Word of God how Jesus used His authority. But let's just look at three of them here uh, right quick. Uh, Mark chapter 5, and let's go down uh, to, uh, well, 40, uh, well, we'll pick up here. Uh, the story is uh, uh, started um, here in uh, the, about the uh, 37th, 38th verse. Um, but there was a ruler of the synagogue, Jairus by name, that had uh, a daughter that, that uh, died. And, um, and he was going to uh, Jairus' house. And um, it says, when he walked in, and I'm looking at verse 41, if you will. When he walked into the house, of course, you know, Jesus looked at things different than... We do a lot of times, you know. He said, well, the, the damsel is just asleep. And they thought, well, he doesn't know what's going on. She's dead. And Jesus said, no, she's not dead. She's asleep. But really, she was dead in the sense of uh, physically not being alive. But here's what Jesus said in verse 41. He took the damsel by the hand and said under unto her, uh, Talitha kumai, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. Now that is straight to the point, authority speaking. He didn't pray around for a while, asking anybody else to do anything. Jesus spoke directly. With authority. You listening to me? Now if a person does not know God's will about something, yeah, you need to find out God's will. But Jesus knew the will of God. He spoke directly to her and said, Damsel, arise. 
Verse 42, And straightway the damsel arose and walked. She was the age of 12 years, and they were astonished with a great astonishment. No wonder. Now, let's look in Matthew chapter 8, if you will. Uh, we'll go down to uh, verse 26. What else can we speak to with authority? Well, let's look and begin here in Matthew 8, 23, okay? Uh, Jesus was with his disciples out uh, on the sea, and there was a great storm or a tempest there, and the waves were covering uh, the ship and all of this. And uh, the disciples came to him and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he said unto them, Why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? Notice here. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. Well, of course, you know, the men marvel, and what manner of man is this? I want to say something about that. We have in our world and in our society, a lot of times whenever a disaster hits, you know, people still refer to it as an act of God. I'm persuaded if that wind and that storm that was happening right there was an act of God, Jesus would never have rebuked his father. Huh? That's right. So, yeah, when you see something coming that the devil stirred up, take authority. Amen? Take authority. All right, one, one more example here. John chapter 5. And uh, we'll look here at verse 8, but um, we'll go back to verse 5. John 5, 5 says this, And a certain man was there which had an infirmity for 38 years. And Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been now a long time in that case. He said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? Well, a common sense response would have said yes. Right? Especially if it come from somebody that had authority. All right? Now, Wilt thou be made whole thee? Impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming that another one steps down for, before me. And you know the story of the pool of Bethesda and the healing powers that was angels troubling the waters and so forth and on. Now, Jesus in verse 8 said unto him, Rise Take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, took up his bed and walked. Amen. Here's my point, church. Authority commands. We may get the idea that we always need to ask this and ask that. And there's a time to ask questions. But when you know the mind of God, you know what the Word says, and you have the anointing of God, then authority needs to command that situation to change. Now, church, we are given. You've been hearing the Word of God, right? 
I've been giving you the word. Hopefully you've heard it. We are given God's words. Did you know God's words are spirit and they are life? Amen. We have been given God's power. And we have been given God's authority. You believe in the authority of the believer? Amen. We've been given that. We can't earn it. But we can receive it. What are we going to do with it? We have even been given God's faith. God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. When you get saved, you've been dealt the measure of faith. Amen. He's dealt to every one of us faith. We can receive His faith. So what's left? It's left for us to speak with boldness and with authority the word of faith. 